Climate change is not the first matter of argument that will come up between people. Mostly it's about the economy, wars on the other side of the world, and what the optics are that change how people feel about their elected officials. But when it does come up, we are bombarded with how mankind is destroying the planet. Certainly as a part of the mess, but plenty of times Mother Nature's role is quickly discarded. Not now. Welcome into Midpoint, president of the Space and Science Research Corporation, a leading independent climate research firm, a former White House space program advisor, and author of Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. It's a pleasure to welcome John Casey into the show today. John, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Ed. The sun, the heat, the warmth with a cold spell. Immediately there are people shaking their heads and saying, how can this possibly be? Uh, the way is uh, pretty straightforward. The sun is not only responsible for heating the earth, and it has done a great job of that over the last few hundred years, but when the sun cuts back and goes into what we call a solar hibernation, cuts back on that warming energy, the earth gets cold. Now, there are those people who will say, it can't change that much. The sun is so far away. I know we're getting into basics of science here, but when you start talking about climate change, I think you have to discuss that a little bit and sometimes give people a little bit of the solar reality here and the distances we face and the things that affect it. Exactly. The 93 million miles between the Earth, Moon system and the Sun is truly a vast distance and yet the Sun is so powerful, so huge that it warms not only the Earth but the other planets as well. What we now know after decades of research is that the slightest variation in the sun's energy output can make the difference between the modern warm period we just went through versus a new global ice age. Okay, now the modern warm period we just went through, was that the anomaly scientifically or is that the norm? This was the norm. Uh, we can look at it from two perspectives. The Holocene warm period of the last 11,400 years is the typical predictable warm period between the 120,000 year cycle of global ice age. On the other hand, what's happening now is a much smaller cycle, but one we can relate to, a relational cycle, of only 206 years long has now decided to shift from warming phase to cooling phase, and we are already in that cooling phase. How long is it go? I mean, 30 years, I mean, that's what the book says. Is that the norm that's here correct. then for the cooling phase for 30 years? That's correct. A, at least a 30 year record cold period. When you talk cold period though, what are we talking? Because we have to be, I, I, I don't want to s scare people here to think that all of a sudden we're going to remake day, of t day after tomorrow and make <laughs> it the second version of this. It's not as if we're going to plunge into an <coughs> ice age though, is it? Uh, day after tomorrow, wonderful movie. I loved it myself. <laughs> uh, day after tomorrow is based on global warming caused a new ice age, mm -hmm. uh, a totally bogus theme from a scientific standpoint. What we're talking about is the sun cutting back on its energy, giving us not an ice age necessarily, but a very cold and difficult cold that will start to damage our crops globally within the next 10 to 15 years. We're not prepared for this though, are we? We are absolutely unprepared. Uh, my last seven years of research and attempts to alert our leaders and the people have shown that we are vastly unprepared. Uh, perhaps the Russians are more prepared than we are, so? but certainly not in the U.S. How so? Well, uh, surprisingly, the former communist Soviet Union uh, is quite open and quite free for their climate scientists to tell the truth about the climate, which is global warming ended many years ago and a new cold climate has begun. They are routinely interviewed on their TV and, and their news media uh, we believe their government is planning for this new cold era, but it's just the opposite here in the U.S., where if any government scientist dared stand up and say what I'm saying today, they wouldn't be around in their job very long. Why is that when we have scientists? Obviously, it's not as if you are, Bill Nye the science guy, <laughs> you, you guys do this for a living. It's not as if you do this on television. So then why, why is it so hard for lawmakers to understand that. Is it partisan politics? Is it current administration? What is it that stops this from becoming at least a part of the equation to make a serious uh, conclusion? It, it has always been about the politics. It has never been about the science. If you go back and look at how the man-made global warming movement got started back in the mid-80s in Great Britain, in fact, and was picked up by the UN and then transferred over to the US, it was always a political movement from the outset 
the greenhouse gas theory, the minuscule amount of CO2 that mankind puts in the atmosphere has just been a political tool to affect political agendas, typically progressive, liberal, and socialist agendas. But is it not fair to say that at least man has a part in all this? I mean, certainly when you see the, the global warming alarmists that come out, they make it seem as if if it's 10 parts, nine of them are all man, one is science. Wouldn't it be the other way around? Uh, clearly it is the other way around. What we've learned, if anything, from the billions and billions of dollars and 25 years of research is that mankind's component to the greenhouse gases is truly insignificant. By even the Department of Energy's standards, natural CO2 is 20 times more voluminous uh, than mankind can produce, and by some estimates, even 40 times. So it's really insignificant even to CO2, which is insignificant to water vapor, which is 95% of all greenhouse gases. Are we looking at at least a scenario where if we take action as Mother Nature changes, that things can repair itself, that the Earth will actually right itself eventually, or are we, as some continue to scream, going to hit a tipping point sooner or later and there's no coming back? The tipping point has already been passed, but it's not the Al Gore tipping point of uncontrolled global warming that we cannot repair or modify. The tipping point was the fact that most Americans in the last five years have begun to realize that the man-made climate change by the greenhouse gas theory is really not all it was cracked up to be. And in fact, in my book, I call it the greatest scientific fraud in history. And it is one that the administration perpetuates. Absolutely does. Uh, when you have the President of the United States in June of last year, as he did at Georgetown University, tell the world that not only do we still have warming, but global warming is accelerating, truly we're in trouble and we're not prepared for what's coming. And you've opened up another can of worms, which unfortunately we're out of time on, but all <laughs> I can think of is food sources, water levels, different things like this, which we are simply not ready to and we, we seem to always be doing as a catch up. We have a lot of else. preparation ahead of us. I want to remind everybody the book once again, we'll show you a copy of it. It is called Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30 Year Cold Spell. It is fascinating and simply something that if you have any interest in the global warming debate, I would really heartily suggest that you read, John. It is a pleasure for you to come by. Thank you. Thank Ed. you so much because, hey, we're always looking to tell the truth here. That's what we do. How hard is that to find with yeah. some places, right? <laughs> All right, after the break, suntan oil and parkas for everyone. Okay, I was just making that up because it seemed to actually fit what's coming up here. Another edition of On Point and so much more right here on Midpoint.